everybody welcome to this video uh in this video i'm going to show you the biggest books on my tbr so i have quite a lot of very very big books on my tbr uh, and since it's one of my reading goals to read more big books uh, i thought it would be nice to make a video about it and then in about a year's time i can look back on it and see how many of these big books i've actually read so the biggest and longest books that i currently own that i have not read yet there are quite a few somehow i tend to buy a lot of big books but i also don't read them that often because i'm usually very intimidated by the size and uh, you know when you see a big book it just feels daunting <laughs> to start it and to actually finish it but uh, i've learned that usually it's definitely worth it because a lot of those big books are actually really good uh, so yeah that's why i want to make more of an effort to you know read these books so yeah basically i'm making this video to hold myself accountable and to um yeah give myself a little push to read more of these big books and yeah that's it for you know what i'm what i'm going to do with this video and let's just get started first of all i have what is basically the queen of big books and that is naturally the priory of the orange tree by samantha shannon so i don't know much about the story with this book and that's the case with most of these books um i do know that this one is about a queendom and i believe um the line of succession is from uh, mother to daughter but the current queen doesn't want to have children so that poses a problem that's all i know about it i know it's high fantasy and everything and that i believe it's made up of six smaller parts so if you feel intimidated by it i've heard that you can also read it in those six parts i don't know if that's true uh, that's just what i think i've heard maybe i just made it up i don't know uh, and yeah this is one uh, that i think is like a number one on my uh, big book tbr because i've heard nothing but good stories about it from the people who've actually read it and yeah it is very intimidating because it's so so big and i don't even know how many pages it has let me see so 830 pages that is quite a lot um yeah but i do love uh, the bone season by samantha shannon so i think this one will be great as well uh hopefully i can read it soon and hopefully i can manage to actually finish it and work myself through this big book and i just know i'm going to love it i'm so excited for it cannot wait next i have the wise man's fear by patrick rothfuss this is the second book in the king killer chronicles i have read the first book which is also very big so i am working my way through this series the thing is that the series still isn't finished yet the third book um is like a book that everybody has been waiting for and it's just not getting published overall this book series is about a man named quote and he's telling his life story which is very interesting and adventurous and full of magic and lots and lots of things that are happening and that's why these books are so big the wise man's fair is 990 pages at least this edition is that's even bigger than the first one the first one did take me a little while to finish but overall not as long as i had expected and i really really love that book it's beautifully written it is just absolutely gorgeous the reason why i haven't read the wise man's fair yet is mostly because i sort of want to wait until we know more about the third book um that might be a long wait because people have been waiting for so long so for now i've been sort of saving it up uh until that day that we get more information but maybe i will read it this year anyway and then i will reread it uh when the third book comes out um so yeah i do know that i'm going to love this one because i love the first one so much then the next big book uh on my tbr is wolf hall by hilary mantle this book is all about thomas cromwell who used to be a lord chancellor of england uh, during the rule of king henry VIII, so it's about his life at court and how everything uh, went for him because he started out very lowly and then worked his way all the way to the top as being lord chancellor and of course during his time at court there's also the stories of the six wives and the separation uh, from the catholic church and the start of the church of england this is one of my favorite pieces of history i love it very very much so that's why uh, i bought this book um, i've never read anything specifically from the eyes of thomas cromwell because he's not necessarily my favorite character from like that time period i'm usually more interested in the stories of uh, you know the six wives and the six queens but it might be nice to read um about this piece of history from another perspective that i haven't really read that much about wolf hall is also a bbc tv series which i haven't seen yet but it always looks very intriguing because i love those kinds of time periods and you know all those dresses and everything um, but yeah wolf hall is uh 650 pages long so it's again quite a biggie 
Um, I do love the gorgeous golden cover of the edition that I have. It's just so, so beautiful. I believe overall this book uh, has some very positive reviews. Also some lesser positive, I guess. But um, I don't know, really know that much about it. Like, I've heard about the series, I've heard about the book. But I don't think I've ever heard that many specific reviews about the book yet which is weird but um maybe that's just me i don't know in any case it's a long big book that i need to read because this is also the first book in a series there's also i believe it's called bring up the bodies and then a third one that i don't know the title of uh, but yeah i just want to read it and immerse myself into tudor history again and it's a big book but I'm sure that once I get the hang of the story, I will absolutely love it. Another very big book that I own is Lady of Hay by Barbara Erskine. This is kind of a weird one because I've never seen it before. I just bought it on a whim at a bookshop. The story of this book is that it's about two women. One is called Matilda and lives in the medieval age. And one is called Jo and is a journalist in uh, present day. And they are sort of connected in some way or another. I'm not completely sure how. Um, but I do believe that their stories are going to intertwine. And this book, I forgot to see how many pages it has. Um, it is 753. So yeah, again, a very big one. And again, one that I have not read yet. And I actually don't really know why, because I do really love the premise of this book. It sounds so interesting, you know, with historical fiction and then art time. And I cannot wait to see how they are connected and how this story is going to work out. And... Um, again, it's just, I think, a case of being so intimidated by the size of this book that I, yeah, don't really pick it up somehow. And that's not really fair towards this book because I think I might really love it if I gave it a chance. Um, so yeah, that's what I want to do, hopefully somewhere in the next year. Because the story sounds beautiful and I think it's definitely something that I will enjoy. Next up, I have two books from the same series and that is the Mark of Athena and the House of Hades from the... Heroes of Olympus series by Rick Riordan. Both these books have around 600 pages, but it's hard to know the exact amount because both of them have some short stories at the end and those aren't being counted towards the total page count. So I'm not completely sure, but it's around 600. Both of these are very big. I will say though that these are young adult books and they read a lot faster than some of the other books in this video. So um, they are big, but I think it's not that bad when you actually read it. I don't think it's the longest book ever, if that makes sense. This series um, is all about uh, half-bloods and demigods. It's about the idea that Greek and Roman gods really do exist even in our day and age. And all the Greek monsters from the myths are real. Basically all the Greek myths are real and the gods also have children called demigods or half-bloods and um, yeah usually this is like the sequel series to the Percy Jackson series and um, with each series there's this main bad guy that needs to be defeated and along the way there are a lot of monsters and quests that need to be uh, solved and defeated. I have read the first two books in this series, but book, um, I believe it's book three and book four are the biggest. Um, yet actually quite big, which is interesting because the Percy Jackson series uh, books are so short. And um, yeah, the first two books were also big, but these ones are definitely bigger. So um, yeah, very excited. This is definitely something different. Those are big books that are a lot more manageable to actually finish, I guess. I'm very excited to be continuing uh, with this series. I cannot wait to see what's going to happen next with all of these characters. And then the last two books of this video are again part of the same series. And that is the Well of Ascension and the... Hero of Ages book 2 and 3 in the Mistborn trilogy. So the entire Mistborn trilogy, basically all the Brandon Sanderson books are very very big. Uh, I've read the first one finally but still not the second and the third one and these two are just, they're so massive. The Well of Ascension is 770 pages and the Hero of Ages is 740 pages so both of them are massive. Very big. Um, yeah, that is kind of intimidating. Ooh, that's kind of intimidating. Um, but I did really enjoy the first one. So I definitely need to continue with this book series. Because I want to know what happens next. And even though they are big and they're going to take up some of my reading time. I think it's so going to be worth it. So yeah, I really need to get going with this series. These two I definitely need to finish before the year is over. Like before 2020 is over. So I still have an entire year. But um, 
I still need to get going with them because yeah, I shouldn't be intimidated or scared because they are so big because they are going to be so good. I'm just, I'm so sure of it. And they are also gorgeous. I love how big book looks. Maybe that's just me, but they're actually gorgeous. I love the design of these. And yeah, that was it for the biggest books that are currently on my TBR, the longest books that are currently on my TBR. Talking about them does make me really excited to read them. So that's probably why it's a good idea that I did this video. And yeah, I really hope you like to hear about all these big books and uh, maybe get inspired to read more big books as well. But this is it now for this video. And I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, uh, maybe go subscribe or give it a thumbs up. As always, I would really appreciate that. Let me know a very big book that is currently on your TBR and then maybe you can read it this year as well. Hopefully I will see you again very soon in my next video. Bye!